So now we're going to evaluate your creativity and our low standards. <laughs> so raise your hand if you use toys and gadgets to help visualize concepts. Good. Raise your hand if you use crafts in your studio. Okay. Raise your hand if you have colorful binders and practice pages to encourage practice. How about if you use games and iPad apps for engagement? Great. And how about picking songs that get kids excited? So, three rewards <coughs> by you. You are a creative piano teacher. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Thanks to the internet, there is a plethora of creative wealth available to piano teachers. Pinterest boards, blogs, and other internet resources provide fresh new ideas to make lessons fun for our students. I know that when I graduated and started real life teaching, I felt like I needed to pull out all the stops to be a competitor in the local market. I do think of myself as a creative person and decided to play to my strengths and I emphasize using games and creative activities and lessons. In my mind, the absolute worst thing that could happen is for a student to leave their lesson saying, Mom, that was so boring, I don't want to come back. I wanted my students to leave every lesson with a wow feeling. So I worked with this mindset for about a year, and my student numbers grew from 15 to 20 to 20 something, and my teaching schedule quickly became full. However, I personally felt dissatisfied and burned out. What could possibly be wrong? I was using all kinds of games, and I was having fun, but I didn't feel like I was being the best teacher I could be for my students. I was missing something, and I suddenly had a realization while an activity may be catchy or fun, playing a game or doing an unconventional activity does not lead to a significant learning experience. I then realized my issue wasn't in the games themselves, but the way I was using the games. Was I implementing them to reinforce and support an overarching educational goal? Or were they just band-aid solutions and a quick fix to fight boredom and keep my students engaged? Even though my students were doing a lot of things, they didn't necessarily understand them and retain the skills that they were learning. I had unintentionally built a forest of information for my students. However, I noticed that my most effective teaching occurred when I made connections between activities that we did, such as applying theory to label forms in a piece of repertoire, or using games to solidify a concept that students didn't initially understand. I realized that I needed to prioritize big picture concepts in my teaching and organize them in a way that students could follow and reinforce over time. Rather than to supply information that students regurgitated back to me week to week. My goal was for my students to be musically literate and be able to transfer concepts from piano lessons to other areas of their life. I then understood that in order for piano lessons to make a difference in student lives, teachers need to plan and create opportunities for significant we like the term significant learning because it has less to do with memorizing and implementing information and more with the student's deep understanding of content. So what does this mean? We came across this concept in L. D. Fink's book, Creating Significant Learning Experiences. Fink states that significant learning is learning that creates lasting change in terms of the student's thinking process and life. He breaks down significant learning into seven synergistic dimensions. Foundational knowledge, application, integration, learning how to learn, caring, and the human dimension. This figure shown on the screen is taken from his book and shows the interactive nature of every component. Through significant learning, the students develop a special connection to what they are learning and understand how that relates to other areas in their life. What struck us about this graphic is that we can find ourselves typically focusing on foundational knowledge and application when we really need to be incorporating all of the dimensions. We have to foster an environment of significant learning in our studios by making sure that all of these elements are present so students can make connections on their own. This can sound like a very lofty and intimidating idea to those who already feel swamped in busy studios.
But rather than looking at it as another responsibility, perhaps this type of teaching is not as difficult as we think. It simply requires strategic design. The need for strategic design can be summed up in this quote by L.D. Fink. Unless a course or teaching is designed properly, all other components of effective teaching will only have limited impact. We believe the need for strategic design lies in the fact that students should not be learning material for the sake of learning material. That's exhausting and unfulfilling. Actually, I think it's perfect that our presentation is last because this encompasses everything that we learned this weekend at this conference. I, I remember the quote from Dr. Collins' master class about when we go home, we're going to be super excited to use everything we've learned in this conference. And our students are going to be like, what is happening? So it, it's important that we come back with the main, the biggest themes that we heard from this weekend's workshops. Mindfulness, improvement of technique, creativity, multimedia approach, and how are you going to do that in an organized manner over a period of time, as opposed to trying it out the first two weeks of your lessons this January and then forgetting about it in February. Right? So this is going to be great if you don't really think about how can I apply this in a cohesive manner. To really make an impact on our students, we need to provide them with opportunities to engage in significant learning and build connections that transform their thinking. Those connections are what they are going to remember the most and carry with them. Not the what's or the amount of material you gave them, but the why's. I think we would all agree that this world needs more why decisions. Correct notes, rhythms, fun games, creative activities, they're not the goal of Canalescence, <coughs> but they're a means to something bigger. We want our students to connect with the music, to think like artists, and to share that with others. To cultivate why musicians, we need to be why teachers. Strategic design is the difference between what teachers and why teachers, and between why teachers and why musicians. Today, piano lessons are not just fun and games, but they are opportunities to use strategic design for significant learning in order to help our students make connections to be better musicians 